Hey everybody, Sprocket here again. So, it's the next day. Fixing to get this spring put in here and get this side put back together. So, this is the new spring for the front. Uh, as you can see, it's painted. It also has this big white spray paint on it. Now, right on the box with the new springs, it tells you white dot goes up. Now, there's a reason for that. If you look at it from the side, it's relatively flat. So up in top of here, which is going to be hard for you to see, so I'm not going to bother trying to show you, it's just a flat round where this sits up inside there. But the bottom is not like that. Okay? That side's not flattened out the same. Now that fits down in here in this pocket. And you can see the shadowing where those two holes are. These are drains. That's the low spot. So right here... This shadow, there's a dip right here. And that, again, is where this goes. So, when you go to put this in here, you got to make sure you orient it correctly, rotate it where it needs to be so it fits in there right. That way the spring has the best chance of doing what it's supposed to do. Alright, so, now I've got the uh, spring compressor in there. I have it compressed. Now be mindful. This is going to stick up through the top. The only way to really get that where you need it, you got to put it up through where the shock goes. That can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Now the other thing, you can see that this has a curve to it once I compressed it. The trick is trying to get that curve to follow where the curve of it is going to be when it's installed in the car. So that way when you go to install it, it works with you instead of against you. I think I've got this where it's going to work with me, but that remains to be seen. Right, so as you can see, springs in place, lower control arms in place, I have the new nuts in there. Now, obviously, if you got a floor jack, this will make life a lot easier. Like, like I said, for those that are actually doing it on the floor, like I am. This helps to get that control arm into place, plus compress the spring just a little bit more because you never have just enough to get this upper one in to where you can get the nut on it. So hopefully, you see on the Nova, I had the problem where it wasn't quite heavy enough of an engine <laughs> to give me enough to compress this. But on this one, it was enough. So got those in place. Now I just need to get the cotter pins put in. As you can see, that one slid into place. Again, with the castle nut, you got to line up the hole in the shaft of the ball joint and the grooves in the nut to make sure you get that through there. And like I said, that keeps it from backing off. Then, uh, oh, I forgot to mention, you want to make sure you have your steering disconnected because that makes this a lot easier. And that's going to be one of the last things you put back on as far as reassembly. The last thing you do is grease it. But, uh, yeah. So, that's where we are so far. Alright, so. Cotter pins are in. Everything's tightened down, locked down. Still don't have the steering put back on because now's the time to do the sway bar end link while you got access to it. You get that in there, mount. Make sure you lubricate this too because, like I was telling you with the old one, they have a tendency of rotting out. But if you put something in there that won't let the water sit in there, it doesn't have that option. Plus, it'll keep it from doing any squeaking. So, put that in first and then hook up your steering. Lube it up and should be good to go. Right, so, focus you. There we go. This is basically your setup for one sway bar end link. You got the bolt, you got the shaft, you got your cup washers, four bushings, and a nut. Now, this here, if you look at that little square on there, that means it's a lock nut. Mechanical locking nut. It means the threads are just slightly different. This isn't like the other style where it's got... Woo, come back here, you. Stop throwing part. Where it's got the um, domed top to it and it's crushed in a little bit. This is actually the threads are offset just a tiny bit. So that way it goes on hard, but it'll lock in place because of that. Now, what I do is I always throw a little bit of grease on the inside of these cups because that's what the rubber rides against. So that way, again, keeps it from squeaking, keeps it from rusting. And then I do this whole shaft because this slides over top of that, goes between two of these washers, keeps everything separate. But um, 
I always throw a little bit of grease in there, like I said, keeps it from squeaking and will keep it from rusting, so it serves dual purpose. All right, something to take note of on these bushings. There is a specific way they go in there. This side that doesn't have the extra rib on it like this one does, this goes against your cup washer. This end goes into either the control arm, <clears throat> excuse me, or the sway bar. That's what that cutout is like that for, is to make sure it fits in there the way it's supposed to go. Okay, so, just wanted to show you guys <clears throat> kind of the difficulty of doing this without releasing the other side. So, what you got to do, get your pieces installed here, slide it up through a little bit, get your other rubber, your other cup, your shaft, cup, bushing, then you got to try and get this up high enough that you can jam that under it and then put the bolt up through. Hey, look at that, it went in. Ooh, it also looks like it's a little bit long. That could be an issue later. We may have to trim that off. We'll worry about that when the time comes. But, just want to let you guys see that it's uh, a little tricky to get that thing in and out of there. All right, so I didn't have to tighten this, or uh, I haven't tightened this down yet, but here's the thing. Remember I said I may have to trim that? Well, I forgot my suspension was fully extended. Once the weight of the car is on here, you can see we put a uh, floor jack underneath of it to bring some of the weight on it. That gets this over here out of the way. I forgot about that. Hey, we all forget sometimes. All right, so there's my two bottom mount bolts for the bottom of the shock. Got them any seized up. I got some any seized up here on the top of the threads. Now this cup and washer, or cup washer, beep, 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 and this here rubber. I got the shaft. I put a real light coat of grease on, which a lot of people don't want to do because it collects dirt. Me, I don't care about dirt. I care about that thing rusting and then tearing up the seal that's down inside of here. So, I also put grease on the shaft here where this bushing is going to sit and inside the cup. Again, keep it from squeaking, it keeps the wear down, and will make it not rust. So, got the steering arm back in place, well, the uh, tie rod end with a new cotter pin. You never want to reuse cotter pins. Uh, just, just don't do it, it's not safe. So that's back in, I've got it all greased up. You can see the grease on the end of the uh, zerk fitting there. And down here, oh, there it is, see it hanging off. And uh, got my compressor out of there, so this is all installed one unit. I just need to get the shock in, and then this side's pretty much done. One thing I forgot to mention. If you're doing this on the floor like I am, you want to make sure you got enough distance in between the control arm and the floor, the floor, to be able to slide this up into place without it catching on anything, with it fully extended. I have found that that works a lot easier. You see my AC Delco sticker? Ain't it pretty? One thing I forgot to mention. If you're doing this on the floor like I am, you want to make sure you got enough distance in between the control arm and the floor, the floor, to be able to slide this up into place without it catching on anything, with it fully extended. I have found that that works a lot easier. You see my AC Delco sticker? Ain't it pretty? Alright, so as you can see, shock's in place, everything is back installed, everything is greased. Well, this side's pretty much done, except for, gotta tighten those top ones down once I get the weight on it, and the bottom ones. I got them snug down, but not so tight that they're not gonna allow this to rotate. So, one side down. Okay, so, um... I know this isn't suspension related, but we pulled the fender off on this end because I'm still waiting on parts to get the other side done. I don't know how well you can see this, but this uh, got hit up in the front and it compressed this a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to straighten that out. I'm not going to do any extensive body work, but I do want to get that straightened out a little bit so it fits around the headlight better. And sorry about the sunlight here. Let's see if I can block it. There we go give you a little better picture of how bad the damage is on this fender especially from the inside it's pretty bad so 
we're going to be uh, welding that up with some actual metal and not Bondo like the last person did. So, yeah. All right, so the lighting in here is not that great because the sun went down. It's kind of a two-edged sword having the sun out or not. Now, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but I took notice when I was removing these, one, how big the holes were, which I thought was a little surprising, but the other thing, you can see there's a white layer in there. It's not primer. It's Bondo. So what we're going to have to do, we already knew there was a bunch of Bondo down here in the bottom of it, and you can see how thick it is. So apparently they went all the way up this thing. I don't know how far. So I'm going to take my sander, and I'm going to start sanding on this thing to figure out what's Bondo, what's metal. So that way I know how bad the damage is and what I have to weld up. So, show you more in a minute. Okay, so, I don't know how well you can see this, but obviously somebody did a repair job here. And the poor quality of the work that they did caused them to also put a pretty thick layer of Bondo over everything. Which, as far as I'm concerned, makes my job all that much harder because now, I don't like Bondo. So I'm going to be removing all of the Bondo so I can see how bad the metal is. Great. Well, you can see up here, it's pretty thick up here too. So somebody, I guess, did some patchwork on this thing and then just instead of trying to make the metal smooth, they decided, I ah, will just coat the whole thing in Bondo and smooth that out instead. The problem with that is, Bondo has a tendency of trapping moisture, which is why you get this, and this. And then the other problem is, this nice trim ring here, uh, for the wheel opening, when I took that off, it was under tension. So when I pulled a couple of screws out, it started coming out away from the uh, fender, which now I know why, because there's Bondo under it, because it doesn't fit the true shape of this the way it's supposed to be. Now, you can't really see it, but there's probably a good 8th inch worth of Bondo there. Which I now have to get rid of. And then fix this metal work right. Uh, anyway, that's going to be it for tonight. Have a good one.